Today on What It's Like, we are back at Classic Auto Mall to feature this 1951 Ford. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get lost in the shuffle. If that sounds like a channel that you would totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Real quick, couple things. This 1951 Ford is for sale at Classic Auto Mall, which is located in Morgantown, Pennsylvania, with over 800 cars for sale when recording this episode. Anyone can go there. It doesn't cost an admission to get in. Link in description if you're interested. Second thing, we are doing a reflection episode sometime next week. We're going to talk past, present, and future of this channel. Fear not, we're not going anywhere. Just want to fill in some blanks and talk about some cool things that happened during this year behind the scenes with this channel. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, voice them in the comment section below and I will answer them during that reflection episode. Let's talk 1951 Ford model lineup. This was the last year for a body style that started back in 1949. It was also known as the shoebox Fords in 49, but by 1951, Ford coined the term look ahead and was available in 16 models. 51 Ford was designed by Joe Orris at the direction of George Walker. The 1951 Ford could be broken down into two trim lines, deluxe and custom. Deluxe could be had in six models, three body designs with two engine choices, either V8 or six, two-door sedan, four-door sedan, and business coupe. Custom series could be had as a two-door sedan, four-door sedan, business coupe with the six or the V8 as optional engines, as well as a convertible, but the convertible only came with the V8 only. Ford also offered the Crescent Liner, which featured a two-tone color scheme and more chrome slash stainless steel accents. The Crescent Liner was replaced mid-year with the Victoria, just like the Chevy Bel Air. The Victoria was a hardtop roof option. Let's talk specs, 196.8 inches long, 71 0.7 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 114 inches. It weighs 3,110 pounds. Price $1,699, which is equivalent to you spending $19,454.27 in the year 2022. Total 1951 Ford production was 1,013,381 units, of which Total Custom Deluxe was 793,363 units. Moving on to engines, which there was two, starting with the six cylinder, 222 cubic inch displacement in line, flathead six, 3.7 liters. It's good for 95 brake horsepower at 3,600 RPM with a bore of 3.3 inches and a stroke of 4.4 inches. Compression 6.8 to one, has four main bearings and is made out of cast iron, fed with one single Holly four barrel carburetor. Moving on to the V8. 239 cubic inch displacement flathead V8, 3.9 liters. It's good for 100 brake horsepower, 3,600 RPM. So it only makes five horsepower more than the six cylinder. Just keep that in mind. That's crazy. Bore is 3.2 inches, stroke 3.8 inches, compression 6.8 to 1, has three main bearings, are made out of cast iron, is fed with a two barrel carburetor. Three transmissions on offer, conventional drive, which was a three-speed manual, the overdrive unit, all new for 1951, Ford O-Matic. It was designed with Borg Warner, also went by the names of Merco matic when installed into Mercury's, turbo drive when installed into Lincoln's. The OG, the original Ford O-Matic, was a three-speed transmission. Oftentimes it gets confused with the Ford O-Matic two-speed unit that comes later. The easiest way to tell the difference is the later Ford O-Matic uses an aluminum case where the original Ford O-Matic gets renamed to cruise matic eventually being called FMX. Let's talk styling. So you could definitely tell that this car has roots back to, 19, to the 49 bullet nose, but they took the bullet nose out and they put all of this in, but it still has the same slab styling that that car has. This car is essentially, you know, you could definitely see it. How this comes back but they did change this this is now chrome on the 49 it's not chrome I haven't seen a 50 yet but just look at how this comes back totally different tail design so, 
This car has a lot of nice, pleasant lines. Slab styling, of course. Check out this. See how that's all textured? Keyhole cover for key lock. Fender skirts. This one's got a Continental kit. That's where the spare tire goes. Check out this piece. Notice how it comes to a point. I absolutely love this hood ornament. I love the fact that this is like a reflective material. Super cool. This one's got, this is the name of these in the comment section below. Check out the bumper overrider. This car has got a lot of accessories. The spotlights on both sides, hood visor, mirrors, another mirror. Opening up this door, this door has some heft to it. Look at all of the different colors. It's it's like quadruple colored. Got like this nice um, gray, almost like a dolphin gray. Navy blue. A lighter gray. Back to, this looks like black. But in that light, it looks navy blue. So... Guess it's navy blue, almost like a whitish gray, navy blue, dolphin gray. Armrest is a different color, as well as door handle to pull the door shut, door handle to get out, window crank for the big window, and that is how it operates. Window is pretty big too. It's got vent windows, and they operate like they operate like that. It can't open up any more than that because it smacks into the mirror. So that's as far open as it will go. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, high beam switch on the floor, clutch, brake, gas, handbrake, hood release. Just take a look at this interior. So that's what the door sounds like shutting. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person looks like. Here is the, the crotch situation. I wear size 34 pants. There's lots of room for me underneath this steering wheel. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Wipers, ignition just below that, headlights, heat and air ventilation controls. Speedometer, notice inside the speedometer, it's not just the speedometer. There's also the water temperature gauge, fuel, oil pressure, amp meter, interior lights, choke, lighter, clock, radio just below that. Up above, sun visors, the driver, sun visor for the passenger, as well as rear view mirror. This car you sit down low in. This is what I look like. I got tons of headroom. You could definitely see the glass to pillar ratio is pretty good in this car. That's what out the rear window looks like from the front. Lots and lots of visibility in this car. I just want to show you this. So this is pretty cool. This is the ashtray. And I was like, there's no way that that's the ashtray. Because I was expecting it to be like a panel. But you pull it out. And sure enough, that is the ashtray. It's very interesting. All right. On to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is our glove box in question. Some of these you have to push it and have fingernails, which I don't because I have a bad habit of chewing my fingernails. All right, so I got it open with some encouragement. So just check this out. And I love showing this because you wouldn't think that this glove box would be that big, but look at how big that is. That's absolutely huge. Like you could probably fit all the other camera stuff in there too. And the, the best part about it is this one locks. 
So like nobody would ever know that that camera is in there. And that's why I like showing it. Oh man, just look at all of that space. Plus it pivots out of the way, which gives you even more space to get back there. Tons of space. I got lots of headroom. This is what the knee situation looks like. Tons of space. It feels like I'm sitting in the back of a DeSoto or Chrysler product. Here's what the rear seat profile looks like. As you can see, it's slightly reclined. The um, cushion does dip down further in the back than it does in the front. Here is what the rear visibility looks like. You can see the Continental kit plus those like nice side fins. Check out the shelf. The shelf's pretty wide. Like I can touch that, but it's barely. There aren't any coat hooks on the passenger side. On the driver's side, same thing, no coat hooks, but there are two lights. There's a light there and there's a light there. No dome light though. There isn't an armrest either for the, on the driver's side nor the passenger side, but the windows do go down and they almost go all the way down. So check that out. So that's cool. And it's got this other window, very similar to what Dodge was doing at this point in time. I wonder if they made a vent feature for the, um, the more expensive models. In the comment section below, if you know. Here's what the back to front view looks like and up over the hood. Okay, so funny story, real quick. I leave this door open, it's in the comment section. Like, why do you leave the door open? It would look more uniform if you shut it. I got in cars before, I, I did an episode with the Mustang Mach-E and I got in the back and I couldn't get out. The child locks were in it. And I'm a big guy, I'm six foot two and I couldn't get out of that car, it sucked. So I leave them open from now on. All right, coming up to the under the hood section, so we already popped it from the inside. The secondary catch is right here, right underneath the Ford logo. Oh yeah, heavy hood, very, very heavy hood. No Notice the horns are mounted on the hood itself. This one's got a flathead V8 down inside there. Check out the vents for the uh, heater boxes back there. Notice how they go back. One's hooked up directly to the heater. The other one must be a ventilation pipe. Battery. Generator. On to the pros and cons. We are getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars. Blue Chip Auto Investments. 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. To be fair, this car isn't in this book, but the 1951 Ford Custom crescent liner is so we're going to take the positives and negatives from that car because they're essentially the same body style on the positive side unique in spite of minor historical significance others for the 49 custom including improved quality against it individual trim pieces are hard to find as for the 49 custom so we got to go back and look at what they said about the 49 custom on the positive side, historical importance, fine styling, improved V8, engineering improvements, finally bringing Ford in line with its competition, good driving cars, against it, moderately rust prone, early assembly quality problems, nobody wants the sixes, which were also available on most customs. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me the correct name of the band as well as song title, first person to do both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Super, super underrated 60s band. That is your hint. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I appreciate all of the support. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. Second way is we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. No obligation to join, just simply telling you. It gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, experiences. If you have videos or whatever, share it on there. It's about car community, and the car community is for everyone. So if I catch you on here or Facebook, just know that I appreciate all the support. And until next time, toodaloo!